Welcome to the Getting to Know LXI video series brought to you by the LXI Consortium. Today's video, Migrating from GPIB to LXI, is presented by Conrad Proft, embedded firmware designer and consultant for the LXI Consortium. Hello and welcome to Migrating from GPIB to LXI. This session is going to help you understand key aspects of migrating from GPIB to LAN based instruments. So test systems that have been built with GPIB for many, many years, guaranteed interoperability, rugged, software techniques are well defined, they just work. But you know, it's pretty easy to move instruments to LAN and retain that GPIB. With a LAN to GPIB gateway, takes that same subsystem of instruments on GPIB, connects them to that gateway, and the gateway itself is connected to a LAN. This is a very common configuration where you have a single LAN cable coming from your PC to a rack of instrumentation. But let's talk more about actually getting to LAN-based instrumentation. So the consortium objectives are many and varied, and we've talked about those in previous presentations. What I want to focus in on is to provide that successor to GPIB. That was one of the key aspects, key objectives of the LXI consortium. So you may already, already be using an LXI compliant instrument, and you just don't know it. You're thinking of your instrument in that test system with a GPIB connector to it, but maybe it already has a LAN port. And that LAN port, if that instrument has LXI compliance, then that has the LXI behavior that you can rely upon to give you that ease of integration and that ex and exposure to the built-in web server and being able to build test systems quicker. Well, how can this actually migrate and make it easy on you as a programmer to change your test system from GPIB to LAN-based instruments? Well, many of the capabilities of GPIB are available through an emulation of GPIB over LAN called the VXI11 protocol. Most GPIB instruments use ASCII or skippy based language, and because of that, they can also use LAN sockets to be able to send that, that language or those commands and read that data, either ASCII or binary, back to the instrument. So if you're not really hung up on needing serial poll or SRQ capabilities, that is also available with LAN socket communication, which gives you the maximum speed. And there's often very little change to your GPIB program, which we'll be talking about here shortly. So examples of changes that you would have to do to your programming code. GPIB configuration with your visa designators, your descriptors of how you would actually talk to that instrument and your various I.O. routines that would actually configure so that you can talk to the instrument. So you're moving from a gateway operated GPIB subsystem or a direct GPIB subsystem to one that's totally connected to land-based instruments. How would you make that transition? Well, quite simply, you would take these same Visa descriptors and put in the equivalent descriptor for that land-based instrument. Well, how would you know what those descriptors are? Well, the connection expert in Agilent's I.O. library or NI's measurement and automation explorer, Max, Agilent's connection expert is illustrated here. What allows you to find instruments quickly. The auto-find capability will go out and discover all of the instruments that are land-based which adhere to the LXI standard protocol. Discovering those instruments, you can then populate your LAN tree. Once populated, you can find out what the descriptor or the visa address is for those particular instruments. And that would be used in your program instead of the GPIB designation. How about performance? When you have LAN-based instruments, you have the added advantage of being able to transfer large blocks of data very quickly. Performance is often more dependent upon the measurement hardware, and there are many cases where land-based instruments operate at exactly the same speed as GPIB instruments because, as I said, they're limited by the measurement performance of the hardware. But as you can see, with this particular voltmeter, it can take 50,000 readings per second continuously, but it can store those readings in its memory. 
and acquire those readings almost six times faster, which is not achievable with GPIB, but is achievable with land-based instruments. Troubleshooting is a key factor in, in creating a test system. You get the wrong measurement results, do you have a settling or a setup problem? Do you have the wrong resolution on the voltmeter? What range are you on? Noisy measurements. What's, what's happening inside the test system that's not giving you the results that you wanted? So you've got your software problems and you've got your hardware problems. How are you going to figure out what is happening? Well, troubleshooting software is actually pretty easy. You step through your program and you stop at a particular breakpoint. You can see what's happening in the software, but what's going on inside the instrument? You can be able to change the state of that instrument and how are you going to do that? Well, if you bring up that web page from the instrument, you can literally see what switches are closed or what the configuration of the DMM is. Automatically, you can see the state of the instrument because there's a built-in web server. Where can you go for more information? LXIStandard.org is the website for the LXI Consortium. That's where you find the specifications. That's where you find many, many papers and presentations such as these and many others. Thank you very much.